Building a photo gallery isn't necessarily anything new, whether you're trying to show off some products for an online store, or maybe you want to share some photos with families and friends. But it can often be a challenge to figure out how you're going to actually structure that project, such as where you're going to store all those images. Sure, you can store them within the repo, but that's going to quickly balloon the size of the project, and it's also unmanageable trying to figure out how you're going to search for those images or how you can add metadata. On top of that, what if you want to add video support? Are you going to store those inside the project as well? Well, I think I found a better way, and I think it's probably the easiest way to build a photo gallery. So we're going to see how we're going to do this in Astro, and we're going to see how we can use the new Astro Cloudinary SDK. Astro's launched its content layer, which makes it really easy to source remote content into an Astro project. And with that, we've launched the Cloudinary Assets Loader, which makes it even easier to source all your images and videos. The way it works is it's built on top of collections, where the first thing that you need to do is use this CLD Assets Loader helper, where you just simply define where you want to pull those from, whether the root of your project or a specific folder. It'll automatically pull those in as the site's getting built, and you can use them just like any other source of data. Now, this is just a bit of a bonus, but once you're loading in those assets from Cloudinary, you can take advantage of things like transformations, where once we're using the CLD image component to actually render that image optimized, we get to use things like background replacement, where we can completely transform an image. So imagine a world where this is going to be my online store, where I want to show all of my products. Now, looking inside my Cloudinary account, I already have this folder set up where I have all of my photos that I want to show as my featured items. All right, so because I already have my Cloudinary account set up, the first thing that I need to do is install the Astro Cloudinary SDK. So I'm going to simply copy the npm install command. Inside of my terminal, I'm going to run npm install Astro Cloudinary. Now, the next step is to actually configure our environment variables, where we have our cloud name, our API key, and our secret. Now, if you're just showing images from your account, you probably only need that public cloud name key. But because we're using the assets loader, which is actually going to fetch the data, we need to have all these all the environment variables. So inside of my project, I'm going to create a new file at the root where I'm going to call this .env. And I'm going to start creating all those names where I'm going to go ahead and copy these in off screen. But you can see that you want to set up your cloud name, your API key and your API secret where the cloud name and the API key are going to have that public prefix. Now, in order to find your credentials, you can head over to your console where under the programmable media dashboard, you'll be able to find your cloud name as well as the API keys section, which will be able to give you your API key and your secret. Where now that all the configuration is out of the way, the only thing we need to do now is actually source those images. So inside of the sidebar, we can scroll down to under loaders where we see the CLD asset Assets loader. And if we click basic usage or examples or whichever you want, we can see how we're going to actually set this up where it's really simple. All we need to do is define a new collection. We're going to use the CLD assets loader helper and just simply specify what folder we want to pull these from. Now, heading again to the code, the way that this is going to work is we're going to create a new file inside of the content directory called config. TS. And this is just a master pattern of where you're going to actually define your collections. Now, as far as setting up the collection, I'm just going to simply copy and paste this because this is everything we need. So I'm going to copy this little block of code where it's going to define my collection, paste it into my config.ts, where we can see we're going to import define collection from cloud or from Astro. We're going to import our CLD assets loader from the Astro Cloudinary Astro SDK. And then we're going to actually set that up. Now, I don't want to have just a limit of four. And I also want to make sure I update this folder, which is going to be e commerce slash fashion. And we can see that that folder name comes from that directory structure that I set up inside of my console. Now, as far as defining that collection and actually sourcing it into Astro, that's literally all you need to do. Now you can customize the name of this if you want, such as maybe I make this products or we can make it featured products, really however you want to set that up. If we actually try to run a build command, such as npm run build or even npm run dev, we're going to actually start to see this output where, let me expand this, we see this line of Cloudinary Assets Loader where it's loading in those Cloudinary Assets. And we haven't even done anything else yet. As simple as that. But now let's actually use this. So we're going to head over to that home page file. And now that we're sourcing those assets, we just simply want to retrieve them from our new Astro collection. So to do that, we're going to use that get collection function from Astro content, where from there, we're going to be able to store it in a variable. So let's start off by doing that. I'm just going to simply copy that first little bit. And inside of the fences, I'm going to add the import. I'll move that to the top though. We're going to get collection and that collection name is going to be that featured products or whatever name that you gave on that property. So in my case, it's featured products. I'm going to also name this featured products and let's just console log this out to see if it's working. And once we refresh the page, we can head over to our terminal where we should now see all of the resource data getting pulled in directly from Cloudinary. But now they're getting served as collection items from within that Astro content layer. Now, honestly, we can just end it there. It's as simple as that to be able to source the assets into your Astro app. But of course, we want to start to show them and actually make that gallery. So I want to build a grid of those product photos. So I'm going to create a new unordered list. Inside, I want to now start looping through each of those product 
featured products. So let's say featured products.map. And for each product, I'm going to return a list item. Inside of that, I want to create a new image for each and every one of them. And then where I'm going to get that data is from the product itself. Now, each one of these items are going to include a data property, which will ultimately be what stores that product or that resource information from our Cloud Rain photo. So I'm going to just simply rename this to resource just so that we kind of have an idea of what that is. And now we're going to start accessing that information where we have our resource dot secure URL, which is ultimately just going to be the URL of the asset uploaded to Cloudry. Now, if you're unsure of where any of that information is coming from, we can see in the terminal that this is all readily available if you want to inspect what's inside. We're later going to use the public ID, but right now we're using to secure a URL. And we likely also want to use something like the width and the height to make sure that we're not dealing with any kind of issues like content layout shifts. So let's also make sure that we're adding that. I'm going to break down the image tag a little bit just to make it a little bit easier to read, but we're going to add our width, which is going to be resource.width as well as our height. Okay, so we got something started here. Our images are way too big, but they are being displayed on the page. So adding some basic styles, I'm going to add a grid, grid calls four, maybe we add a gap of six, and now it's starting to look like a grid of products. I think we're starting to guess somewhere. But we have a couple problems here. First off, the images take a long time to load. If I open up my network tab here, we can see that if I reload the page, these images are really big. Now, I just uploaded them directly from Unsplash into my Cloudinary account, and they're just being served raw. So these are just huge images that are really unnecessarily big. Now, Astro has its own image component, but we're already delivering from Cloudinary, and Cloudinary actually has its own optimization. Now, again, because we're already delivering from Cloudinary, we can actually take advantage of Cloudinary's optimization, where if we look at the CLD image component, it'll automatically opt us into two different optimizations, where we have our quality optimization, which will automatically compress it, compress it to a point where it's not going to visually distort the image. But also, we have four format optimization, where depending on the browser and the device, it's automatically going to deliver the most efficient image format for those browsers and devices. Now that format optimization is especially important when you want to try to support as many browsers and devices as you can with as lean of an image as you can, especially with more modern formats coming out like JXL, which can provide better benefits. Okay, so how does this work? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to import the CLD image component. So back inside of my index page, I'm going to simply now import CLD image from Astro Cloudinary. And then if we scroll to the bottom, all I need to do is just simply drop in that CLD image to replace my image. Now, instead of passing the secure URL, we're going to now update that to the public ID and that's it. Now, if I head back to the browser where my page is already refreshed, we can look inside the network tab and these are all now being delivered as AVIF files and they've dramatically reduced in size. And this hasn't even reduced the size of the image itself, where if we try to inspect one of these, like this first one, we can see that the intrinsic size is still 1280, which brings me to another point. We don't need over 1000 pixels for this image that is currently being delivered in not even 150 pixel wide of a space. Now this is another benefit. I can now just find the sizes prop and let's specify maybe 25 viewport width because it's about a quarter of the page. If we now head back to the page and try to check out that size, we can see that it's now being delivered at 640 pixels. And if we look at the network tab, we can see that that's much lower than it even was before we made that additional responsive sizing optimization. Now, you might be wondering though, why it's being shown at 640, and I'm using Unpick under the hood for that CLD image component, and that's probably just the smallest size that it has available when it's creating those dynamic sizes. But let's take a look at what this URL looks like. If I open this up in a new tab, we can see that we have this width property, which is setting it to 640. So that's happening on the fly. Now, if you imagine in that source set, you're just simply adding that width value and resizing it as much as you want. So if there was a lower number, which maybe it's configurable inside of Unpick, if I had a, low, a lower number such as maybe 300, which would probably be a more appropriate size, we can see that by simply changing that parameter, we now have that smaller image. All right, now if we start to scroll down the page, we can see that we actually still have some issues though, where in particular, this image is landscape where all the other images are portrait. And we can even see that some of these images just differ in size and it looks kind of weird and inconsistent. Now, another feature inherent to Cloudinary is we're able to dynamically crop and resize our images. And that's not just hiding it with CSS or using some kind of trick to make it appear like it's the same size. It's actually cutting away those pixels from the image so that you're not wasting that precious bandwidth when you're trying to deliver them. It's actually trimming it down so you're delivering a smaller file. So for instance, maybe I want all these images to be the the same ratio as 600 by 900. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define 600 by 900, and then I'm going to specify a crop of auto. 
Now, if we head back to the page, we can see everything is looking so much better and more consistent. We even now have a portrait image out of what was once a landscape image. And because we're now defining a crop of auto, we're using AI to automatically determine what the subject of the image is. And it's automatically going to frame it to make it look as best as it can and consistent throughout all the different photos. Now, there's probably way too many examples up here of different features and effects that I can go through to kind of try out. I think the only one that I kind of want to show that I think is pretty interesting is this background replacement where you can use AI and sp simply specify a prompt of what you want to replace. Where just for instance, let's say replace background and I'm going to say space. And as we can imagine, our new fashion line is out of this world. But the point is we were able to do this with just a prop and we we're able to do it at scale with all of our images with just a teeny bit of code. But as I mentioned, we can also support videos with this. So if we look at the video player, it's going to have pretty much the same exact API, only we're going to pass in the source of a video. Now I'm going to load at a different source for this. So let's call this featured videos. And I think I'm just going to use the samples directory from this, which comes with all Cloudinary accounts, where the only thing we need to do now is specify a resource type of video. So now I'm going to go ahead and clone this line of actually being able to fetch my featured videos. We can also clone this grid and maybe I just make this two columns since they're going to be videos and we probably want them to look a little bigger. Uh, we're going to import this CLD video player from Astro Cloudinary. I'm going to now update this to featured videos and for each video I'm going to render the CLD video player instead and we can make sure we update that variable. We can get rid of the crop prop. We can get rid of the background place, get rid of the other ones. And the only other thing that'll do is make sure I update the width and height, the actual size that I want these to be, which I'm just going to use the native width and the native height. And we were able to see again, just like that, we're now able to source our videos in there and play them using the Cloudinary player. It was really just that easy, but let's also crop these. Now, because we're using videos now, as opposed to the images, the API is going to look slightly different. But if we head to this example here, we can see that all we need to do is define this transformation prop where we define the width, the height, how we want to actually crop it and the gravity, which is going to be able to automatically track the subject inside of the video. And let's add this to our videos. So let's add the transformation prop and we can do the same thing as we did before. Let's call this 600 by 900. I'm going to up this or I guess revert this to 600 by 900. But similar to the images, they might take a little bit longer the first time because we're actually processing this on the fly. Because what's happening is when we make that request, Cloudinary is going to actually process that video on the servers. Then once it is processed, it's going to store it, it's going to cache it. So then every time after that, it's going to be delivered really quickly from its CDN. And we can see now that all of our videos are ready to go. And you can imagine that this is really handy for something like social media, where maybe you have a bunch of videos that are in the landscape format for something like YouTube, and you want to be able to have them for social media. Being able to actually crop them on the fly without having to manually do that is really helpful, especially at scale. Now, just to fix a quick quirk here, and I might just do this automatically out of the box, we can see that the images are a little bit of lower resolution because the poster isn't properly resizing to the vertical resizing that we're doing. But what we can do is just manually define the poster that we want to define. And we can use this poster prop where we can pass in an API similar to CLD image where we can just define the crop that we want. So I'm just going to add poster and we can say that I want to add a crop of fill. I want the size to be width 600, height 900. And I also want to add the gravity of auto. And it looks like I actually need to fix the types for this. But if we look at the browser, we can see all these posters look nice and crisp now, and then we can play the videos exactly as we want. Now, the only other thing that I'll cover here is another thing that's important when sourcing our assets is actually defining some metadata. So I'm going to go ahead and comment out these videos just for a second, and let's go ahead and focus back on these product images. But for all these product images, I want to make sure that I have things like alt descriptions. I want to be able to have product IDs, anything that I'll need to be able to reference these specific, specific images to a product. Now, when we upload this image to Cloudinary, we also have the ability to define custom metadata data where we have two that are kind of predefined. We have a title and we have a caption, which we can define our alt text, but then we can kind of define any kind of contextual metadata that we want, including something like a product ID, or maybe this product ID is one, two, three, four. Now, as far as alt descriptions go, we could probably manually write all those out. That's a little bit inefficient. Cloudinary does actually have some image capping APIs using AI that makes that a lot easier. So if I take this image, for instance, and let me go ahead and save this, and I go ahead and try to upload this to this AI demo that we have here. We can see that it's going to process using the APIs, but we can see that we get this caption of a person in casual tires sits on a BMX bike against a backdrop of a starry night sky and colorful cosmic elements. So let's go ahead and copy this caption and head back over to the console where I'm going to add that as my alt description. 
I'm going to hit save. Now back inside of my code, I'm going to head back to my collections configuration and add a new property called context and set that equal to true because this is going to be our contextual metadata. And because of the way that the Astro content layer works, it's going to be cached. So we need to refresh that cache so it can pull in new information. So what we can do is we can actually just run npm run build force and we're going to be passing that force flag to the astro build operation so that it can actually refresh that cache for us but then if we spin up a new dev server again we can reload the page and see what data we get i'm realizing that not all these are going to actually have that because we only added that contextual metadata to one but if we scroll up to where we can find the first item we can see we now have this context object now let's log that out where how about what we do is i'm going to go ahead and just console log out com feature products and I'm going to instead log out console log each for each resource we're going to add context or how about I do if resource context then we just simply log that out and refreshing the page we can now see that we get this custom context that includes that alt value as well as that product ID. So that's going to be really helpful if I need to reference that product ID to something, maybe even just link to that new product. But that alt text is going to be really handy because now I can specify on my alt tag, my context custom dot alt, which is critical for accessibility. And we can now see that that image now has our alt tag, which is perfect. Now this also gives you the opportunity to add tags. So maybe I want to add t-shirt to this image so that I can filter for all the images that have a t-shirt inside. And similarly, I can simply specify tags true and get all those tags inside of my app. So maybe then I can add some categories for the images that people can actually look at. So I have to imagine you agree that this was really easy to spin up a new gallery. Next up, let's focus on the UX of the gallery and see how we can add an interactive modal. 